And we have Eric Myrick from Fayette ABC here to make a presentation. Mr. Myrick. I'm, I'm delighted to meet with you today and to have this opportunity to, to take 10 minutes. And I promise the, it won't be more than that. So you're welcome to ask questions. Um, I represent more than 350 citizens in the community uh, so far who signed a petition with regard to concern uh, over uh, the negative unintended consequences of standardized test preparation in our schools. And I have the petition here. To date, there are 358 citizens who have signed, representing at least 14 schools, uh, 16 zip codes across uh, Fayette County. And so uh, first off, I want to give you a sense that this is very broad uh, in terms of all of these things. Beyond that, I want to give you uh, first off as well, uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to be here, acknowledge uh, the fact that we're very grateful that you're willing to allow us to have this discussion and to put forth the fact that we believe Fayette County Schools are very, very good. And in a lot of ways, as we come with a petition, we want you to know that we believe that the glass is half full, it's not half empty, and that our schools have a wonderful foundation in all sorts of different ways and manners. And the breadth of that can a lot of ways be seen in uh, a meeting like this where you see all of the awards and all of the things that uh, our students do. The problem that we would like to address is, of course, in part a national problem. Uh, it was recently addressed by both President Obama and by Secretary of Education Arne Duncan. Notwithstanding that it's a national problem, something we see across the nation, we believe that as citizens of Fayette County, we have a moral obligation and a responsibility to address this at the local level. In terms of this, I'm going to come back at the end to this moral responsibility and obligation, but I want to make just some specific points in terms of some of our concerns. And as I make these points, I want to make very clear that we're very aware that some of the problems that we and lots of other people have seen in our schools uh, vary from school to school. And that uh, this, you know, different people are going to speak about this in, in different ways in terms of what's going on in their different schools. But I want to give you just kind of a broad sense of that. I've got four points, then we'll come back to this idea of responsibility. Among other things, we have a concern that too much time is spent practicing open response questions and learning to answer uh, questions and tests in very formulaic ways. And uh, among other things, we believe that this leaves our students very unprepared for the reality of the world in which we live today. A world that isn't about A, B, C, or D. A world in which you've got to be able to think on your feet and you've got to be able to discuss and deal with you know, real world problems in a very changing sort of manner. Standardized test preparation doesn't prepare our students for that. Beyond that, it doesn't prepare our students, I would argue, uh, for college. I happen to be a history professor, and uh, I asked a number of my colleagues their thoughts in terms of how our students are that are coming in as you know, freshmen at the University of Kentucky. Among other things, one of my colleagues wrote this. The most troubling effect of standardized testing that I observe is that it reinforces the idea that there is one correct answer to every question fatal to developing a facility with historical interpretation. She's from the history department. I've observed that students are ever more wedded to the idea that why questions must have the same simple fact, fact answers that when questions do. And for this reason, teaching to standardize tests also kills any incipient enthusiasm a student might have by reinforcing the idea that study, the study of history in this case, is merely the boring and repugnant memorization and regurgitation of names and dates, i.e. stuff that can be tested. Beyond our concerns in terms of the time being spent 
on, uh, you know, in formulate test preparation sorts of ways. We're concerned that about test celebrations in our schools in which students who do not score proficient are physically singled out when others are recognized. We're concerned about the time taken away from valuable learning activities by additional testing requirements and teacher paperwork burdens. And really, above all in all of this, is the sense that we believe we're sending to our students that a test, a standardized test, is the ultimate goal of learning. Once the tests are done, we see instruction taper off. And you'll see this, of course, across schools. And students are left with the idea that the whole purpose of going to school is to practice to take tests. I want to return to this idea of responsibility very briefly. What does a test score tell us? How do you interpret tests? Um, I want to use an example. I took the ACT 25 years ago or so. Uh, all of our students that go prepare to go off to college are going to have to take some kind of standardized test uh, as, they're, as they're doing so, the ACT, the SAT, and so forth. If a student a college graduate came to you for a job at an, you know, you're interviewing for a job, and they came with the number of their ACT score emblazoned across their chest on their shirt, would you hire them? Would you say that shows that you're able to do this job? Ultimately, a score, a number, is supposed to be representative of other things but it's a partial measurement, and it leaves out so very much, arguably the most important things that can't be numerically measured. In terms of our schools, does a test score equal school quality? In terms of our students, can a single number, even a series of numbers, really assess what a child is learning? I often wonder, I was thinking about this earlier today, I have four young children, if there were a test to determine what makes a good father, and there was a number, and we could rate what makes a good parent, and I took that test, what number would I get? How would it really reflect all of the things that I do with my children? A test, a number, cannot tell you what a child's potential is any more than it can tell you really where school or a teacher or a principal stands at any given moment in time. It's a measurement. It can be used in all sorts of important ways, but it's an impartial uh, measurement. What's the best way to find out how your child is doing in school? Is it to look at you know, the score they get on a standardized test? Um, I think most people would tell you no. As a parent, I can tell you that I have a very good idea how my children are progressing in school. I don't need a specific number. Beyond that, I go to the teacher and I ask. The teacher sees my children every day. They see what they're doing and so forth. Skip Kiefer, uh, a fellow professor at the University of K Kentucky, uh, psycho uh, mathematician, does all sorts of things with numbers, creating tests, and was among the first to create these tests in the state of Kentucky, said this in terms of how they should be understood and interpreted. Uh, this was in 2003. First, it remains the case, I hope, that the best information a parent can receive about the performance of their child is from the child's teacher. A score in a Kentucky assessment or nationally normed test cannot begin to provide the depth and breadth of information that a visit to the child's teacher can give. As an alternative, uh, what are the consequences of relying largely on these numbers? Among other things, tremendous pressure, that pressure makes its way down to students. Uh, how do we address these problems? Locally, of course, they can be addressed at our SBDMs. But we want to reiterate to the board that this is a district-wide problem and needs to be addressed in district ways. Uh, with dialogue, with the solutions not being about any given single school. Ultimately, Stu, as superintendent, sets an agenda for his principals. He sets expectations. Whoever the future uh, superintendent is will be doing the same thing. In turn, the, uh, the principal set expectations for the teachers, the teachers set expectations for the children. There are things we can do in our SBDMs to solve this problem, and we're trying to do that. But ultimately, again, everything starts with the district. 
and it needs to be addressed as a district-wide uh, issue. A final point is the myth that this is a problem uh, that we didn't create. And of course, that, I shouldn't say that's a myth. I, I would very much agree with that. It's a national problem. Um, but there's a myth that it's a problem that we cannot solve locally, and that if we attempt to solve the consequences, as it were, because of test scores and the way they're currently used, will be devastating for our schools. I would argue that this is politics of fear. Ultimately, the federal government provides somewhere around 10% of the funding here in Fayette County. Other funding comes from state taxes and comes from our taxes, the citizens of Fayette County. In many ways, this is the story of the tail wagging the dog. Beyond that is the notion, or what I should say, the fear that theoretically, on the books, according to the law, the Department of Education here in Kentucky can take over control of our funds, could even take our district over if our, you know, if our scores weren't high enough and so forth. Across the nation today, it's projected that eight out of 10 schools are failing or will fail according to these test-based ideas, these test-based numbers. There's no way that eight out of 10 school districts across the nation are going to be taken over by local government, as it were. Additionally, as I said at the beginning, the Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan, President Obama himself, have argued that the uh, current expectations are not reasonable, in many ways that the scores are bogus, and that the law is flawed. We have the faith that you as board members will go to bat for us, both to the legislature and beyond and make the decisions that are most important for our children so that learning and education is exciting and inspirational and really about what teaching was meant to be, not about a number. Thank you. Thank you. And I have copies of our petition here. I'm, I'm happy to take questions, but I'm also, I know you're on a tight schedule. I'll do whatever you want. We appreciate your input, and uh, we know how to get, get in touch with you if we need additional input or have questions for you.